in this video we'll be learning about craniovertebral junction and its radio anatomy and uh, almost all of the congenital pathologies in brief and this includes the craniometry lines landmarks and angles this will help you report any craniovertebral junction anomalies either on x-ray ct or mri we'll touch with all the modalities but mainly i'll explain on the ct sagittal and the coronal sections my name is dr aishwarya durgat and uh, in this video whatever we'll be learning you can apply it on day-to-day -day cases on mri or CT brain and evaluate because most of them will be asymptomatic and in symptomatic cases you can do the measurements. So what all we'll be learning in this video? We'll be learning craniometry. Uh, so first we learn landmarks, lines and angles and then normal measurements of each lines and angles. Then multimodality assessment of say craniovertebral junction. Later we'll learn about the pathologies especially the congenital CVJ anomalies and uh, in this video, we'll be learning about craniovertebral junction and its radio anatomy and in brief about the pathologies. We'll learn about the craniometry that involves lines, landmarks and angles. My name is Dr. Aishwarya Durgat. So, we'll be primarily learning on the CT, sagittal and coronal sections which we can apply it even on the X-ray and MRI. So, day-to-day -day basis, you can use these measurements. So, in this video, first we will be learning about the craniometry, that is the landmarks, lines and angles, then their normal measurements. Later, we will move on to multimodality assessment of craniovertebral junction and uh, in brief about the pathologies mainly involving the congenital CVJ anomalies. So, first in the landmarks is the clivus, then we have the C1 vertebra that is also called as atlas and here we have the C2 vertebral body that is called the axis and this posterior portion of occiput is called ophistheon which we will later learn and this is the foramen magnum. These are the main landmarks and again We have few more landmarks. This is the nasion. This is the posterior end of heart palate. Then we have anterior arch of C1 or atlas. This is the posterior arch of C1. Here we have the odontoid process of C2 also called as dense. And this posterior point of occiput is called the ophistheon and this point in the clivus is called the basion. And here we have tuberculum cellae and here the dorsum cellae lining the pituitary fossa. Next we have on the coronal sections here we can see the tip of mastoid process and this is the occipital condyle here we have the odontoid process or the dense body of C2 the lateral masses of at least bilaterally we can see. So these form the craniovertebral junction coming to the lines first we have the chamber lanes line so these lines join from one point to the other and then we have some normal value associated first is chamber lane joining from posterior end of heart palate to the ophistheon this is how the line goes if tip of dense is 3 mm above this line then it says that there is bacillar invagination next we have mech rays line in mech rays line we have the line joining from basion to the ophistheon so this is the point where the foramen magnum exists also so from anterior to posterior the margins of the foramen magnum denote mech rays line so if tip of the odontoid is normally 5 mm below this line then it is normal tip crosses this line then it says that there is bacillar invagination next we have modification of the previous line mentioned that is the mcgregor line now is nothing but modification of the chamber lanes line 
So in this, the first point is the same. It starts from posterior end of heart palate, but now it is joining not to the ophistheon, but it is joining to the most caudal point on the occiput. In some patients, these two points are different. So ophistheon is difficult to be identified on X-ray. So most inferior portion of the occiput is identified and McGregor line is joined. So this is the Chamberlain's line to the ophistheon. Now let's join this to the tip of occiput. This is the McGregor line. So if tip of dense lies 4.5 mm above this line, then it is called bacillar invagination. For Chamberlain's line, it was 3 mm. Here we have 4.5. Next is the Wackenheim line. Wackenheim line is also called as Clivus canal line. So this line is extrapolated on the dorsal surface of the clivus. So this is how you extrapolate the line. Normally the dense is ventral to it that is anterior to it and tangential to this line. In cases of bacillar invagination, the dense is above this line, above or posterior to this line. Next, we have digastric line. These are on the coronal section. So, this is the line joining between right and left digastric grooves in the mastoid part of temporal bone. They are also called incisory mastoidae, the digastric grooves. So, these are the digastric grooves and the line joining is called digastric line. The distance between this line and the tip of the dense is normally 11 mm. If it is less than 11 mm, that is if dense comes closer to this line, that means there is bacillar invagination. Next on coronal, we have the bimastoid line. In bimastoid line, we draw the line between the inferior tips of bilateral mastoid processes. So this is easy. It is in the name itself. It's by mastoid line. So tips you identify, draw the line. And normally the dense should not project 10 mm above this line. So if it projects more than 10 mm above this line, that means it suggests bacillar invagination. Coming to angles, we are done with the lines. First, we have Welcher basal angle, also normally known as the basal angle. So, first line is drawn from nasion to the tuberculum cellae. Next line is from tuberculum cellae to the basion. So, these two lines measure the angle. Normally, the angle is 125 to 143 degrees. In cases of platybasia, flat skull, it is more than 143 degree, becomes more obtuse. In cases of bacillar kyphosis, it's less than 125 degrees. Seeing on MRI, uh, I'll just show the modified MRI technique of Welcher basal angle. It's mainly used for MR. It's also called skull base angle. So this modified technique we have is line is joined across the anterior cranial fossa up to the dorsum cellae. Next, another line along the posterior margin of the clivus. So, this is modified Welcher basal, and normally this is 114 plus or minus 5 in children, 117 plus or minus 6 degrees in adults. Next angle we have is the clivus canal angle so the name itself suggests one line uh, this is between the intersection of two lines one is the Wackenheim's line and next is the posterior vertebral uh, body line so that's the Wackenheim line and next we have along the posterior vertebral body one more line normally it's 150 to 180 degrees in platybasia it's less than 150 degrees Next, we have Claus index. Claus index says that distance between tip of the dense and the tuberculum torcula line. That tuberculum torcula line is also called as twinning line. It's drawn from the tuberculum to the torcula and then 
normally the dense is 40 to 41 mm below this line. Next is the Atlanto occipital joint axis angle. This is on coronal. So the angle formed at the junction of two lines drawn along the Atlanto occipital joints. So one line here, one more line here. This angle is normally 124 to 127 degrees. Becomes more wider or obtuse in cases of condyle hypoplasia. Coming to the congenital anomalies of Craniovertebral junction. Anomalies involving the occiput hypoplasia are or occiput are condylus tertius, condylus hypoplasia, basiput, basi occiput hypoplasia. Anomalies involving atlanto occipital junction are atlanto occipital assimilation, platybasia, very important, and bacillar invagination. This we will see little in detail. And next. Anomalies involving atlas vertebra, C1 vertebra are anterior and posterior arch anomalies. Anomalies involving axis are osiculum terminal or os terminal, os odontodium and odontoid aplasia. The first two are differential diagnosis of each other. Coming to the syndromes which will involve the craniovertebral junction. So it can have all of these anomalies which we listed or a combination of them. Kyrie malformation involves CVJ, Klippel-Feil syndrome, osteogenesis imperfecta, achondroplasia. These all involve the craniovertebral junction. Next coming to each of them a little in detail. Basi occiput hypoplasia where there is hypoplastic clivus or the basi occiput. Next we have occipital condyle hypoplasia. In this the occipital condyle will be hypoplastic either unilateral or bilateral. Here you can see in red is the hypoplastic left occipital condyle. Next we have condylus tertius. So condylus tertius is nothing but third condyle. Here you can see the small corticated bony fragment that is due to incomplete regression of the midline hypochordal arches of embryonic proatlas. So that is the reason for this third condyle. Differential diagnosis will be dense fracture, os odontodium, os terminal and calcification of dense ligament also can mimic this. Coming to anomalies of atlas, there can be anterior and posterior arch anomalies involving the atlas. So here in first image you can see congenital defect in the anterior arch of atlas and the post um, this is a well corticated defect is there. So this is not a fracture. So see the margins if they are corticated it's a congenital defect. In posterior arch anomalies we have curarino classification. In curarino classification the first type is failed midline fusion. Second is unilateral defect. Third is bilateral defect. Fourth is absent arch with a persistent posterior tubercle. In fifth one all are absent. Entire arch and the tubercle all are absent. Next we have axis anomalies. First is the osiculum terminal and this is due to failure of fusion of secondary ossification center of the odontoid process or the dense. This is also called as Bergman ossicle. Here you can see well corticated ossicle at the tip of the dense and usually the dense is of normal height in this and it's usually in the midline. Next we have os odontodium. So os odontodium is the un uh, the theory behind the cause is unrecognized fracture of the growth plate of dense before the age of 5 to 6 might be the cause of odontodium formation and usually will have abnormal CVJ mobility. Here you can see well corticated ossicle and in this there will be hypoplastic dense. Remember and it's usually associated with hypertrophied anterior arch of atlas. 
Then we have odontoid aplasia. I have an x-ray image of this. It's rare and that's due to failure of ossification of the dents itself. Here you can see this blunted end and there is no odontoid process seen. Atlanto occipital joint anomalies. First you have the assimilation. Here there will be fusion of C1 with the occiput condyles. There can be complete fusion or incomplete fusion. Here you can see the joint space is not visualized, the atlanto-occipital joint space. So it's bilateral here and you can confirm the fusion in the sagittal sections. Associations of this will be block vertebrae. Look for the whole spine, look for cervical ribs and bacillar invagination. Also other craniovertebral junction instability will be there. Next we have platybasia. It says flat base of skull. So there will be abnormal flattening of skull base and in this we use the measurements. So first measure the Welcher basal angle. This is not the modified one. This is the Welcher basal angle. In platybasia it will be more than 143 degree. Normal is 125 to 143. Becomes more obtuse. Next measurement will be modified basal angle. This is MRI modification along the anti fossa to tubercular and along the posterior aspect of clivus. This measurement in adults will be 116 to 118. In child 113 to 15 and it will be increased in platybasia. Coming to clivus canal angle measurement. So clivus canal angle is measured wherever you draw posterior line to the uh, clivus and posterior to the vertebral bodies. It is decreased in platybasia less than 150 degrees. Normally it is 150 to 180 degrees. Coming to the next important sector that is bacillar invagination. It is the same case where there will be abnormally high vertebral column. It is invaginated into the foramen magnum. So it is prolapsed into the skull base. First measurement here all the lines will come. First is the Chamberlain's line. Posterior aspect of hard palate to the ophistheon. So tip of tense is above this line in this case. Normally it should be below. Next we have McGregor line which is modification of Chamberlain line. And next McRae's line. It is the line along the foramen magnum. So tip of dense is ab above this line in this case. Normally it should be 5 mm below this line. Next we have claws index. First we have to draw tuberculum tocula line. Normally the dense is uh, 40 to 41 mm below. If it is within 30 mm that is bacillar invagination. So like, share and subscribe our channel if you like this video and comment down for more videos. Thank you.